I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will explore the quadratic function in factored form and understand its characteristics. Question here is find the zeros and the vertex of a parabola then sketch its graph. So we have two questions here. We will do both of them one by one. right? So this video is very important for you to understand quadratic functions and how to write them in factored form when given in standard form. So the first one is y equals to 2x squared plus 15x plus 7. So let us factor. We are looking for two numbers whose product is 7. 7 times 4. So p times q is 14 and whose sum is 15. So the two numbers are 14 and 1. So we can write 15 as combination of 14 and 1. So we can write this as 2x squared plus 14x plus x plus 7. Right. Now first two terms we can take 2x common so we get x plus 7 here plus we have x plus 7. Now we can factor x plus 7 and so we get the factored form which is like this. Now from these factors we can find the zeros so that is the factored form from standard equation. Now here we have zeros and zeros are for us when these factors are 0. So we can equate x plus 7 equals to 0 that gives us x equals to minus 7 and 2x plus 1 equals to 0 that gives us x equals to minus half. So we have two zeros here. So we get the two zeros to get the vertex. Vertex is average of these two right always in the center of these two zeros. So to get the vertex what do we do? We find the mean value of these right. So I am finding now from these two zeros we find the mean value for the vertex x. So, so the x values for the vertex will be minus 7 minus half divided by 2. So that is the x value for us which is right in the center of this. So minus 7 minus half will give us 7 times 2 is 14. 14 minus 1 is 15 over 2 that gives us 15 over 4 right so so let me write here so x for the vertex point is when you simplify this you get minus 15 over 4 that is the x value now if I substitute 15 over 4 in my formula then I get the y value it's kind of complicated right so you can substitute there so we say y value for the vertex will be minus 15 over 4 for the x value. So it is 2 times minus 15 over 4 whole square plus 15 times minus 15 over 4 plus 7. Correct? And you can find this out using the calculator. Correct? So at present I don't have a calculator and I don't intend to calculate it. You can always figure it out. Now let me sketch this function. Now since the leading coefficient is positive, what we really have is a parabola which is going to open upwards. So, so let me sketch this in the space left for me. So I will do uh, <coughs> uh, something like this. Okay. Now interesting part here is we can also find the y-intercept. y-intercept is when x is 0, so y-intercept is kind of 7. So the parabola crosses somewhere there, right? So we have two zeros here. First zero is at minus seven, the other one is at minus half. So the parabola is kind of on this side, right? So let me sketch one parabola here on this side. I'm doing a rough sketch here. You should take a graph paper and then do it, okay? So we have kind of like this, right? Now, since you know I didn't really find the vertex, so I don't know what that point is, but you can fill it up. Okay, so this is what we have, but easy to place is the y-intercept and these two points which we find. And these two points are minus 7 and minus half, right? So those are the points. And we know the x's of symmetry, which is on the vertex, correct? Right? Which is at x equals to minus 15 over 4, correct? So that is the x's of symmetry, minus 15 over 4, right? So that is how you can get the sketch of a quadratic function from the factored form, right? Okay. 
Now, next question here is y equals to minus 8x squared minus 13x plus 6. Let us factor this one also. So, I prefer to actually use take away minus first and then do the factoring, right? Because I get confused when there's minus in the beginning. So, let me rewrite this function. So, we'll rewrite this as 8x squared plus 13x minus 6, right? Now, I feel comfortable about it. So, we are looking for two numbers whose product should be 6 minus 6 times 8, which is minus 48, and whose sum should be plus 13 in this case, right? Because we factored out minus. Now, you can try a couple of terms, 48, for example, 12 times 4, but 12 plus 4 is not 6, 13. Uh, well, 16 times 3 is a good number to choose, right? So, if I have 16 and 3, 16 positive and 3 negative, then when you multiply them, you get minus 48. When you add them, you get plus 13. So, these are good numbers to work with. In fact, the correct numbers. So, we can write this as minus 8x squared and 13 we will write as plus 16x minus 3x minus 6, right? Now, we can factor 8x here. We get x plus 2. And in this case, we can factor minus 3. We get x plus 2. You have to get the same factor. If you don't, then there is something wrong. Now, we can take x plus 2 common, right? So, let me write x plus 2. And here, we have 8x minus 3. And it's good time to drop this square bracket, since now we have included the minus also. So, here, what we have, we have two x intercepts. One is at x equals 2 minus 2. So, it gives me x intercept at when x plus 2 equals to 0. So, the first one is at x equals to minus 2. The second one is at 8x minus 3 equals to 0. That means x equals to 3 over 8. Some of these questions have very complicated zeros, right? So, that is what it is. Now, what I will do is, again, I'll drop the idea of calculating the vertex, which you can calculate by finding the axis of symmetry, right? So, okay. Now, this also is a parabola, which has two x-intercepts, one on the negative side and the other one on the right side, positive, okay? So, kind of like this. We'll just sketch it. Anyway, it's a good practice to find axis first. So, axis of symmetry for us will be the average value. So, which is minus 2 plus 3 over 8 over 2, okay? So, that is the axis of symmetry. So, 8 times 2 is 16, which is minus 16. Minus 16 plus 3 is minus 13. So, we get a good value of minus 13 over 8 times 2 is 16. So, it's very complicated. So, that is my axis of symmetry, which is slightly less than 1, okay? So, what I will do here is, I'm not using calculator today at all. I'll sketch the parabola. Now, minus means the parabola is opening downwards, correct? And uh, it's easy to find the y-intercept always. So, we'll write f of 0. Let me write here f of 0. Substitute 0 here, that is a y-intercept, is at 6. Good. So, 1 is at minus 2, the other one is a positive value. So, the more on this side. So, I'll just sketch a rough, rough parabola, okay? And, and, and the axis is on this side, so the peak is somewhere here, right? So, we'll go like this, come backwards like this. So, that becomes our parabola, where this point for us is at minus 2, and this point for us is 3 by 8, correct? And the vertex, this is our vertex, axis of symmetry is here. Axis of symmetry is x equals to minus 13 over 16. And the y-intercept for us is at 6. You get the point. So, that is kind of a parabola. It opens downwards. And y-value for the vertex you can calculate by substituting x equals to minus 13 over 16, right? So, approximately 1, right? Slightly, maybe, minus, minus. Yeah, it is it has to be uh, more than 6, right? So, I'm just figuring out. So, this becomes positive. This will be negative. 
So approximately between 10 and 11, okay? So this value is approximately 10 and 11 in between that. That is what you can use calculator and figure it out. But important thing here which I really wanted to teach you is whenever we are given an equation in standard form, you can always factor it by the methods which we have learned. The factors give you the zeros. Equate each factor to zero. Find your zeros. Once you have found the zeros, then average of these two zeros, in this case minus 2 and 3 over 2, will give you axis of symmetry. On the axis of symmetry lies the vertex. Substitute the value of x of the axis of symmetry in the equation to find the y value. Once you get the y value, you know x and y coordinates of the vertex. Right? This minus sign indicates the parabola opens downwards and a plus sign in the previous indicates parabola opens upwards, right? I intended to take uh, simpler questions, but I just took one. And they turned out to be very difficult to work with, right? When there are fractions like this. So I guess when you start working with these, take help of calculator. Thank you and all the best.